and action, and hello, uh, and, and hey, happy, happy new, new year. year. This is our first episode back after our break. Thank you for letting us have a break. Episode 85. 85, that's a million episodes. That's so many. Yeah. We're really excited about this. This is one of our best episodes of all time. We went to the dog park, woof, woof. Woof, bark, or bark, or, bark, or bark, depending bark, on... Depending on your pr g gender. And <laughs> girls dog, girl dogs go woof, boy dogs go bark. Yeah, it's true. And... Um, <laughs> This is honestly one of our best episodes of all time. This guy we have, I mean, we had... I don't want to spoil it, I Okay, think. all right. Don't... It's just an incredible interview, and I'm just so blown away that we were able to talk to the people we talked to in this mm -hmm. episode. Yeah. And we see a lot of cute dogs, too. We get it all. We got it all. Speaking of getting it all, we also got merch for sale. Podcastbutoutside.com. Support the show. Buy some stuff from us. Apologies if you haven't gotten... It, yeah. If you bought merch before the holidays, there was a crazy backup at the USPS and some stuff hasn't arrived yet. We've since shipped stuff out in the last few days that arrived on time in like two or three days, but for some reason, some of those packages didn't arrive. They will come, we promise. If not, email us and we'll get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Speaking of merch, um, I am, in spite, reselling my own store, my Titty Pussy store. I'm selling fuck ass and Titty Pussy merch because Walgreens apparently adopted a new mascot that's a freaking dumbass pill bottle or some shit. So I am uh, re I'm doing what's called a revenge sale, where okay. I am selling shirts. Okay, and I just want to apologize for all the swears that Cole just did. Okay, I feel really bad about that. All our, right, our New Year's resolution this year is to help is to our sh is to our show get more better, popular. Thank you. So if you like this show or listen to the show or watch the show, tell a friend about the show. Rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Subscribe to us on podcast apps. That all really helps our numbers go up, and we want the show to be to get seen by more people because we're excited about all the people we talk to. We want more people to hear them. Yeah. But thank you guys for watching and listening. We're excited to be back after our nice little break. Yes. Theme song this week is by Ken, Ken Juno. Juno. Uh, he's a rad black dude. Self-described self in the email he sent us. We looked him up. He was, in fact, a rad black dude. Ken is older on Instagram. This is an amazing theme song. Thank you, Ken. Well, he's not. His at is Ken is older Ken is older. Instagram. That's his Instagram. Thank you for making this theme song, Ken. And thank you all for listening and watching. Enjoy the episode. It's so fun. Woof, woof. Or, I'm a boy. Wait. Bark, bark. Let's welcome Cole and Andrew. Two white guys sitting on chairs outside And they got masks around yeah. And they wanna talk to you So go ahead, pop a squat Talk a little, talk a lot Do it all for the views You've got nothing to lose There's a dollar for you here on the podcast Hello, and welcome to, to podcast, podcast But Outside. Outside. This is the world's first podcast. My name is Andrew. My name is Graham Trindle. Hogart. Oh, sorry. I was wrong. Hogart. If you've never heard or watched this show before, the whole point of the show is for me and Gramps to set up a table on the sidewalk and talk to strangers. We have a sign on our table that says, Hi, be a guest on our podcast and we'll pay, pay you, you one dollar. Smiley face. Um, we like to talk to random people on the street. That's the point of this show. Today we're actually at the dog park. Hey, how's it going? Hey, family. Today we're at the dog park. We're at the South Pasadena Dog Park. Um, and we're here to hopefully talk to some dogs and hopefully talk to some people. Um, I didn't bring my dog because this is the big side of the dog park. And my dog is tiny. And I didn't think he would be welcome here. Yeah, your dog's kind of, w like, worthless in terms of defense. He is a pipsqueak, and he is worthless. I do love him, dis in spite of all that. Or is, that why you, is that why people get smaller dogs, so they can feel, like, superior, and, like, they're actually, like, the protector? Mm, I can't speak for everyone else, but yes, that's why I got it. Okay. Because what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring my dog into a tense situation... And then I'll be the aggressor and I'll beat up whoever's being weird. Because mm. if someone's being weird, I beat their ass up. Okay. And then my dog recognizes me as Alpha. My dog you don't growing have... up oh, you, oh, recognized yeah. me as Alf. Oh, really? From the yeah. show? Mm -hmm. How? Well, I would dress up. I guess, as... it's, I guess it's more misrecognized. But also, I, I, I got big dogs because I wanted to be put in my place. Oh, so you wanted the dogs to kind of check you a little bit. Yeah, I was sort of in the market for a doggy dom and situation. How did, and how did that work? 
Great. I mean, I was, you know, I was their little alf. I was their little chew toy getting thrown around. And it was kind of my fantasy. This is your idea or your parents? From a young age, I've always wanted to be doggy domed. Really? Hey, Dalamation. Hey, how you doing? You want to talk, talk to us? us? You want to talk to us? Yeah. Hey, you'll, be, you'll be our first guest. Just have a seat. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Dalmatian. Yeah, yeah, have a seat there. Put those on. You're the first person to use that in, in a couple months, so it's all, it's all safe. What is uh, that? What is it about? You'll see. It's, 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 it's anything. It's about anything. Oh my gosh, I love your dog. I like low-key don't know, but it's about like BDSM. Or no, oh no. my gosh. I, he, he ate the... <laughs> that's so funny. I love that. The dog just ate the... It just bit the microphone cover Wait, off the microphone. Did you hear what he said, though? He said, I low-key hope it's not about BDSM or something. That is pretty funny that he just said that. It's not about BDSM. I mean, he was he was talking about that, but it's not about that. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Little puppy. I like, I like okay. that command. Chill out instead of down. Chill out. Sit. Oh, that woman took all the dogs with her. Sit. Oh, she was she was the leader of the dogs. This is so yeah. chaotic. Hey. Oh, oh, this dog is so cute. It's a little. For the listeners, it's a little puppy Dalmatian. <laughs> it looks like a handful. Duke, <laughs> Duke down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> this is so chaotic i love it there's another black lab <laughs> trying to sniff its butt and while this guy is just trying to get his headphones on he's just all he's trying to do is get his headphones on and this dog is intercepting it at every single level hey how's it going <laughs> hello hey what's your name How are you? my name is donovan donovan, donovan. And, and duke is the dog duke is the dog yes oh. Oh. donovan hello. how are you i'm doing great how's it going Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, we just started this episode. It's going to be our first episode of 2021. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we're recording this on December 30th, so a little bit before. Yeah, absolutely. So you got? Did you get Duke recently? I did. He's five months old, and I've had him for four months. Oh my Whoa. gosh, he's so cute. Oh, Whoa. he loves you so much. Yeah, he's a good little boy. Are you a fireman? Uh, I'm not a fireman, but okay. fun fact, I was an EMT Ooh. Uh, at one time oh. in the past. But yeah. What inspired you to get a dog? Um, love animals very, very much, and uh, dogs are just really great companions, and there's nothing like uh, living in the big city and also having, you know, the dog with you is always a lot of fun, and um, yeah. What about this dog specifically? Did you want a Dalmatian, or did it just come into your life? I thought a Dalmatian would be a really <laughs> good fit. Uh, is it? <laughs> I know, right? As he's, as he's jumping all over me and stuff. <laughs> Um, the, yeah, I thought a Dalmatian would be a really good fit. They are for like a high active sort of lifestyle. I could tell. Um, they need a minimum of 60 minutes every day of just like pure exercise or activity. That's how I am. So, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) absolutely. So, um, it kind of forces you to get that morning jog in or hike or something like that. And I'm glad that you're bringing, bringing into the dog park because, you know, I feel bad for dogs, you know, born during the pandemic because it's much harder to socialize, but I think it's great that you're bringing him out here and he's meeting new dogs. Right. We were kind of worried about that with the pandemic and yep. him being a puppy and totally. getting the socialization mm-hmm. in. Uh, but the dog park's been amazing. Yeah. Did you live alone before Duke? Uh, I did live alone before Duke. Aww. And so now he's my my partner in crime, as they say. He's my little road dog. He just kind of comes everywhere with me. I love that. What do you do for work? Uh, I'm in... Um, charity philanthropy oh cool. Cool. tell mm-hmm. us about Very that cool. uh so i operate i'm a director of investor relations for a single family charitable trust mm-hmm. um which is pretty cool the charitable trust focuses um currently right now on veteran issues for uh veterans of the armed services and uh which is really great so and there's a huge need in that sort of section um and so we're kind of there fulfilling hopefully fulfilling that need. Isn't that kind of crazy? Isn't that sad that a, a nonprofit organization independent of the government has to come in and give veterans their things that they deserve? Right. I, mean, I think you do see um, a progression towards a betterment of the treatment of veterans overall by the government, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is always that outside need. Um, mm. And just to take it above and beyond, you know, is always, is always mm-hmm. really great. Do you mm. have any veterans in your personal life? I do. I'm a fun fact again. I'm actually a veteran of the United States Army. Ooh. You know, I was going to ask because I, I figured you probably had a history with that. Yeah, you said you used to be an EMT, right? Right. Was uh, those in the Army? 
Yep, so um, I got my EMT certification in the military, in the Army, uh, when I was training to be a combat medic. Wow. wow. You're also kind of a veteran of raising Duke. <laughs> I, I am. Duke is definitely... <laughs> this, is he, a, this is a war. Yeah, he's definitely turned my my home into a war zone a little bit yeah. with his puppy antics but yeah. uh he's just so cute he gets away with it right? oh he is so cute is this is this his is this his max size or is he gonna get bigger he's gonna double in about size so right now he's about 30 pounds wow. and uh we're thinking that he's gonna be around 50 pounds or so oh my god and wow. when you say we are you referencing a partner or just you and duke uh just well i mean of course me and duke okay. always. Okay. You're, about, <laughs> you're like you and duke have been talking about it and he's probably gonna be 60 <laughs> yeah we've been thinking about it seeing how he kind of feels you know yeah. the growth spurts how's it how's it going but yeah <laughs> that's great wow. um how did you get involved in philanthropy and how do you what do you do you have any advice for people who are interested in that field absolutely so i would say for me personally my background <laughs> academically is in, is in economics and um do. and i kind of was doing that route the wall street finance route for a few a few years mm -hmm. and uh then decided that i would like to pivot into philanthropy for people that kind of want to get involved but they're not sure how, I would say the first thing is just to to do it, just to begin the work on it. Mm. Don't let perfection be um, like waiting for something to be perfect to be a catalyst to stop you. Mm. Um, just begin and start putting in the work and doing the research and uh, you really will be able to go far. Yeah, I think that can be applied to anything, yes. like any even creative type, like yes. I mean, you like art, you know, entertainment type stuff. Absolutely. It's especially good for a first episode of the year because it is yeah. kind of like that is the time when you're trying to, you know, kind of maybe make a, you know, turn a new leaf or start a new process. Whoa, oh my big God. doggies. Big doggies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, you guys are friends with Duke? Yeah, oh. he's brought the crew over. Right? Does he love like all dogs and stuff? He does. So he he loves. I think he loves people more than he loves dogs. But he he loves all dogs. He just wants to play constantly, and yeah. he's learning not all dogs want to play all the time, especially as they get older. Can I give him a treat? Oh yeah, sure, absolutely. He loves highly food motivated. <laughs> okay, a fan of ours named Erica made these um, bones, which I'll put on the screen. They are they are um, dog treats, homemade that say podcast, but outside on the dog treat. Oh. So Duke. Duke, Duke, look, buddy. Can you sit for me, Duke? He'd rather eat rocks. Don't eat rocks. Tooth, Duke, sit. Look, buddy, he has a tree. Tooth. I guess you. I call him Tooth, which is my dog's <laughs> kind of name. Duke, look, bud. sit. <laughs> look, 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 Duke. I have a treat for you. He's not used to food in the dog park being Duke, a thing. Look at that. Look at that. I just. Oh, some other dog. Here, Maybe if you give it to him. Let's see. Duke, you want a treat, bud? Oh, he loves it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> Not as good as a rock, oh my but God. we're being swarmed. <laughs> swarmed by the dogs. Wow. Hi. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, do you, um, this is awesome to talk to you. Absolutely. Anything exciting for you coming up in this new year or anything you're looking forward to? Um, I think like most people, 2020 has definitely been like a year. So just kind of this idea of sort of turning the page is sure. uh, definitely look f looking forward to that for sure. It's mm -hmm. been intense. Yeah, absolutely. I hope next year is just as good. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That would be great if we could just keep it going, you mm -hmm. know. Like, where are you from originally? Originally the state of Arizona. Okay. Uh, but I've lived in New York City most of my life. Oh, yeah. Because you mentioned Wall Street. I was going to ask you if you lived in New York. Right. Too. Yeah. I am an old uh, New York, a former New Yorker. Mm. Uh, what brought you west? The Just sort of a change of pace, a little bit yeah. better quality of life, I think. In, in the East Coast, there is really no work-life balance. It's sort of you work really, really hard, and then you play really, really hard. Mm -hmm. sure. No balance. Where on the West Coast, you kind of find the same amount of work is being done but it's being done with like you work a little and then you play a little work a little play a little sure. um it's there's a little the work-life balance can't be beat for sure. sure i think having a dog kind of settles you into a little bit of a i don't know a good balance as well because like you said you have to exercise every day you have to kind of take care of the dog i think it's a good thing for people looking for balance oh yeah absolutely i got a dog two years ago and i, I oh, love wow. him and yeah yeah he's oh, great so cute he's not here because he's too small he's, he's like oh. a, he's tiny but <laughs> that's adorable yeah well it was so awesome to talk to you we're gonna pay absolutely. you a dollar and a sticker Ooh. and you've been our first guest of 2021 and we really appreciate it absolutely this is yeah. great yeah it was such a pleasure um all right so here's a dollar and a sticker and, and a there you go. And we love Duke so much. 
We're going to give you another treat in case Duke wants it later. It has uh-huh. the name of our show on it. So <laughs> oh, wow, this Duke. is awesome. Yeah, Thank homemade you treat. so much. Yeah. And we will donate the dollar to Foster Charitable Trust, the charitable trust oh, that I'm great. working with. Okay. And um, yeah, that would be really great. Awesome. And How well, can people help veterans if they're interested in getting involved? I think a really good way is to search out good organized veteran service organizations in your area. Okay. Um, the a, a Google search or something like that is actually really helpful. Um, just do a little bit of research, see what sort of charity they are, if they're involved with something that you agree with or that you believe in, um, and then just kind of go from there, definitely. And what would you say, one final question, sorry, is what would you say is the main thing that is... Um, that veterans need help with or that that is maybe lost in the system or or like what do you think what do you spend the most time kind of concerning yourself with in that respect i think right now specifically foster charitable trust we are focusing on veteran suicide yeah um which is a big deal statistically now every day of more veterans die or service members die um, from suicide then die in Iraq wow. or Afghanistan. Wow. Wow, yeah. So as a statistic, that kind of makes it sort of stick out to you how large of a problem it is. Um, veterans have larger, higher suicide rates than you see in, say, the general population. Sure, sure. Um, and so that is one area that we're specifically focusing on um, to sort of to, to help in that way. And I think when you're looking at suicide in general, specifically like veteran suicide, it does take, um, to kind of full circle back to your point, it does sort of take a um, community approach sure. or um, a holistic approach where it, could, it can't just be the Department of Veteran Affairs or the government um, working on that. That's something as like a community, we would all want to come together um, and support people dealing with mental health issues, uh, specifically veteran suicide. Great. Mm-hmm. Thank you Great. for that information. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you so much. You were an awesome guest. Absolutely. Yeah. Happy Take New care, Year. Take care, Duke. Yeah. Say bye, Duke. Yeah. Ruff, ruff. Ruff, oh, ruff. We love Duke. Congratulations on Duke. He's so cute. Cheers. All Happy right. New Year. Take care. Uh, Take Happy care. New Year. Maybe we'll come back in six months and he'll be double the size. Yeah. We'd love to see him. We'd love an update. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, nice Donovan. To meet you. Yeah. You're great. You want to sit down? I'm going to, let me, let me replace the, let me, let me, let me, um, sanitize. Let me sanitize it. And while Andrew's doing that, I will say, that these dog treats were sent to us in our P.O. box. I don't know the address right now, but we do unboxing... 27052. 27052. 90027, Los Angeles, California, is our P.O. box. And if people send us things, we open them on Patreon and sometimes use them for our show, such as these dog treats that Eric has sent. And also, we got some cool umbrellas that we have yet to use that clip to our table so that it will block us from the sun or rain or hail or in case people are mad at us and are throwing things. Before this man sits down, do you want to thank Gabby? I would love to thank Gabby and I have a question for you, Cole. Okay. We're all looking to save money, right? I guess so, yeah. How would you like an extra $961 a year in your pocket? <laughs> what? I would love that. Well, yeah. that's the average. Are you of, offering? N- well, not really. That's oh, just okay. that's how much Gabby customers save per year oh, right. on average on car and home insurance. Okay. That's why when I was shopping for insurance, I used Gabby. Um, Gabby takes the payout of shopping for insurance by giving you an apples to apples comparison of your current coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers like Progressive, Nationwide, and Travelers. Mm. Just link your current insurance account, and in just minutes, you'll be able to see quotes for the exact coverage you currently have. That's what was really easy. I just tried the Gabby thing like 10 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. It was so easy. You look on the I did it all on my phone. You just so go to I. you go to Gabby.com, G-A-B-I, by the way, and you log in through your existing insurance provider. So I just logged in via Geico, and then they pulled up all the information on my policy. I didn't have to enter anything in myself. They just knew it all. And then they compared the rate that I'm currently paying with all these other companies to see whether or not I was getting the best deal. Yeah, 40 plus. And I did mine, and I realized that I've been getting cheated. Really? getting robbed. I should be going with travelers as opposed to Wawanisa. But you don't even like to travel. I know. But how did? You, but the traveler's insurance is better for you? It's cheaper. All right, so Cole's going to switch. I personally discovered that the insurance that I'm currently using with Geico is the cheapest that it gets for me. So I'm happy knowing and having the peace of mind that I have the cheapest insurance, that I'm covered how I want to be. And I don't need to change anything, but it was really great to use Gabby to find that out. Mm-hmm. And like we mentioned earlier, Gabby customers save $961 per year on 
average. And I bet that'd be a nice amount of money to get every year just by trying Gabby for free. If they can't find you savings like they did for Cole, i.e. they didn't find savings for me, but that's okay. They'll let you know so you can relax knowing you have the best rate out there. And they'll never sell your info, so no annoying spam or robocalls. Though I, you, I do welcome robocalls. Oh, Cole likes them. If you have insurance, there's no reason not to go to Gabby and see if you're getting the best rate. Yeah, because you're probably overpaying. On, on car and home insurance. Yeah, so see how much Gabby can save you. It's totally free to check out. There's no obligation. Go to Gabby.com slash outside. outside. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash outside. Once again, Gabby.com slash Slash outside. outside. Check thank it out. Thank you, Gabby. And thank you, um, Cole. Thank you, Cole. Oh, thanks, man. We'd also like to talk about HelloFresh. Yeah, we would. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. HelloFresh lets you skip trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Wow, number one. Yeah, that's like the best there is. It's one of the, yeah, definitely up there. I mean, I think that's the best. It's number one. HelloFresh offers 23 plus recipes each week featuring a range of flavors, cuisines, and ingredients so you'll never get bored. That's one of the best parts about HelloFresh. There's such a variety and there's always something new to cook and you always learn something new and kind of try something you've never cooked before. Also, HelloFresh's Easy Eats offering has tons of quick and easy meal solutions like oven ready and 10 and 20 minute meals perfect for your busy schedule. I also got to cook in my brand new kitchen now oh, that I moved. Congratulations. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I made the uh, Southwestern beef tacos. How was that? yummy.com have you ever made beef tacos before uh i have not and now you have now i have i'm kind That's... of an expert at it it's with bell peppers and there's this like this lime cream on thing and pepper jack cheese that sounds like you kind of got pretty good at it i recently made flautas they were like black bean and sweet potato flautas i'd never make flaut i'd never made flautas before I didn't even know flautas were a real thing. I thought it was a conspiracy, mm -hmm. but they gave me really easy step-by-step -step instructions to make flautas, and now people call me the flautas king. Yeah, and that's what HelloFresh is known for, is like debunking conspiracies They're that flautas <laughs> are real. HelloFresh really is an easy way to cook and learn new things in the cooking realm. It's a new year. If you want to get become a better cook or cook meals you've never cooked before, HelloFresh is an easy and affordable way to do it. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 10 outside and use code 10, 10 outside, outside for 10 free, free meals. meals including free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash 10 outside and use code 10 outside for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Thank you, HelloFresh. America's number, number one, one meal, meal kit. kit. Back to the show. Another guest waiting in the wings. And another guest. Hello. Hey. Hey, how, how are you? Good, how, good are, how you? are you? All right. What's your name? My name's Jerry. Jerry. Hey, Jerry. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. All nice. right. Happy to hear that. Thanks for waiting patiently. Yeah, I don't mind. How's you your day going? Oh, it's a, like normal days. Normal days. Do you have a dog here at this dog Yeah, park? I do. Yeah. Oh, where, yeah. Where's, where's he at? It's uh, the Siberian uh, Husky. Oh, oh, you got cool. Oh, great. Siberian Husky. Wow. Yeah, that's him right over there. Her right over there. Oh, she's so cute. Yeah, she is cute. How? She thinks she's cute, too. Oh, yeah? She knows it? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How old is she? Uh, she's a year and a half. Oh, oh, a puppy. Yeah, I just got her like uh, two weeks ago. Oh, Aww. a new dog? Yeah, new dog. That's Aww. so exciting. Yeah, my old dog passed away. Aww. Oh, is that her? No. No, no, sorry. That's, yeah. that's oh, I see, she's over there, right? Yeah, yeah, she's a Siberian husky. Oh, I see her. I see her. Siberian yeah. Siberian husky. Sorry about your sorry about your dog, but I'm happy for your new dog. Yeah, it broke my heart when yeah. my old dog died. How long How long did you have him? I have about her. eight years. Wow. Oh my God, that's the toughest part of getting a dog. It's just you're setting yourself up for heartbreak. <laughs> yeah, well, I've had dogs all my life. Yeah. yeah. Ever since I was a year. Oh. Whoa. Mm. So wow, you've had a lot of dogs, huh? Yeah, a lot of dogs. So uh, you're from you're from North Carolina? I'm from North Carolina. I see the hat and the sweater. Oh yeah, I love the tar heels. Oh and the yeah, that's great. How are they doing? Oh, they're playing in the Orange Bowl. Oh, that's the Orange great. Bowl? That's great. Yeah. That's cool. So how yeah. long have you been out, out on the West Coast? Uh ten years. Okay, mm. what do you do for work? Uh, well, I'm retired. Retired. Mm -hmm. I was a lawyer. 
Okay. Whoa, what kind of law? Uh, civil rights. Oh, oh, that's very interesting. It was for me. I represented the Southern Christian Leadership Conference for a while. And that was uh, Dr. King's uh, yeah, outfit. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh. Yeah. So you've led a very interesting life. Oh, well, I did my best. So yeah. tell us more about uh, how you got involved in, in um, that type of work. Uh, well, I really got involved in it. Uh, in high school, I was uh, uh, a illegitimate kid, mm. and uh, you know, it, I felt that uh, I was shunned a lot of times. Oh, oh really? How and so? so? And so, uh, you know, I would uh, take the uh, side of the minority oh, wow. when I was in school. Mm. And you th- and you think that you faced repercussions from that, huh? Yeah. yeah Interesting. I did. So you grew up in a in a, you would say like a more racist society and very it was racist. Interesting. My parents thought that we ought to return to slavery. Really, well, your parents did. Yeah, they thought that that was the. And at what worst age? What thing. age did you start to break away from that mindset? Ah, uh, oh God, it's hard to say. I they had a black guy that worked for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I made friends with him, mm-hmm. and uh, he was my buddy. Okay. Wow. And uh, so, were your parents upset that you g- went into the line of work that you went into? Very. Wow. Oh. They disowned me uh, eventually. Really? Whoa. Yeah. Because of that work? Yes. Wow. And, I mean, and then because I had a uh, black secretary hired. A right. Black secretary that upset them most of all. Wow. That's really crazy because you know, uh, you know, for to make change and to fight for what's right, oftentimes you have to make personal sacrifices. Yeah. And you made a very clear one in that your parents didn't approve of what you were doing. Yeah, and you know, and I didn't really care by then. Right. I, I, I did not follow what they said. Right. You know. I'm glad you didn't. So, and uh, what about siblings? Do you have any siblings? No, no siblings. Okay. Only child. Oh wow. Wow. So at w- at what age was that when uh, when you kind of decided to see that your views different uh, differentiated from your parents? Uh, in school, high in school, school, high school. Wow. Yeah. Quick content warning. Jerry brings up a case involving sexual assault. It's not incredibly graphic, but we thought we'd uh, let you know. If so you if want to you... skip that, skip forward ninety seconds from now. And you also face repercussions from other kids, right? You said? Yeah, yeah. So, so what would they, like, what, like what type of stuff? Uh, it w- they disowned me, is what it said. I, I, I represented this uh, woman from uh, my hometown who had uh, killed a jail guard who raped her. Oh, wow. wow. And it was a big case. Sure. And the the town talked so bad about me. They said, wow! Yeah, you know, they said all sorts of things that, you know, I had done wrong and I was uh, an illegitimate child. Whoa! And, Whoa. You know, every, every everything they could, and they really disliked me. And How did that case turn out? I won. Whoa. Congratulations! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Was the, did did she kill him in jail? Yes. How? Wow. How? Wow. wow. How it was that? a big story. It was a big case in this country. That's Her name was Joan Little. Oh wow! Joan I'll Little. look it up. Joan and, Little. Uh, yeah, and she uh, he he took a, an ice stick into the jail cell, and uh, to rape her. Oh wow! Gosh. And uh, he decided it, it was. It, the racism is really crazy. Sure, sure, sure. sure. So the ice pick was used against him, right? Yeah, against her, and she he he brought it into the jail cell. Mm-hmm. But then she used it against him, or she got it away from wow, him. Wow, what a crazy story! Was yeah. that your first big case? Uh, no, not uh, actually not. Wow, what was your first big case? I desegregated some schools and. Wow. Uh, that's that's a that's a nice little humble brag. Yeah, I did. Oh, I desegregated some schools. <laughs> <laughs> that's an amazing accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that's awesome. I, you know, I had a good judge. And it, wow. And the, and the judge, uh, he liked me. So and so, how long was your career? I had twenty some years. And did you see a change in sentiment amongst the type of cases you were trying to, to you know, put forth and, and the people who were hearing them and juries? And, like, did you, did you feel like society changed in many ways? Or Well, uh, I, uh, had a, I uh, brought a case, a civil case against a cop. Okay. okay. Uh, beating up and shooting a black guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the jurors 
found that uh, he was uh, uh, wronged by the police. Yeah. And uh, s- 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 you know, find the the policeman to money. Okay. And uh, it, it was an all white jury. Wow. Okay. And they liked his mother. Mm-hmm. And he thought his mother had seen what had happened, and was begging the policeman not to shoot him. Wow. And uh, he, the policeman did shoot him. Oh, man. And, uh, but the, uh, you know, the, all those white people on that jury found sure. it. That would never have happened. That would never say, happen. five years ago. Okay. Beforehand. So you kind of saw situations like that where you're like, hopefully we're going in the right direction. Some. Right, some. some. some very little, but some. And this was all in the South that you worked? In the South. Wow. I, I worked around the nation i did uh death penalty cases around the nation arguing okay. against arguing against the death penalty and getting people off death row yeah. and stuff wow. Wow. yeah because that that was a big problem and the country was death it was death penalty cases mm-hmm. yeah i mean didn't we just vote on that and we voted it down or something in some jurisdictions not not wholly yeah and uh but the uh the death death penalty ca- cases are still a problem no i know i i, I, have, sure. a fr- I have a friend who's Moshe Kasher, a friend of the show, he's very passionate about you know trying to abolish the death penalty and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, and and then I was lucky in trying death penalty cases. I won all but one. Whoa. Okay. I won 147 death penalty cases. Oh really? My God. Yeah. Do you keep in touch with any of the men whose lives you've saved? Sometimes. Or women? Sometimes. That's I, so wow. I, I, I you know see them and talk to them. I gotta say, you know, these people are lucky to have you as their lawyer, and we're lucky to have you as a guest. This yeah, is very interesting, this is Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you oh, so thank much. You. I'm you're so one of the most. I think you're the most interesting guest you're we've ever had. Probably our best guest. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, we. Have, oh, look at that. That's oh, that's a beautiful dog. Hey. Yeah, yeah. So, what what brought you to the West Coast? Uh, my wife wanted to move out here. Okay. And I had had a, a good career, I thought. Sure. And she was just starting in her career. She was a teacher. Okay. Mm. So I said, well, you know, I've had a good career, and, you know, she deserves her chance. Yeah. Sure. And so her, she had family out here. Mm-hmm. And so that caused her to want to move out here. Wow. So we did, and I had broken my back. And oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Uh, no, and that was a... I wasn't doing regular cases, I, although I was consulting on a lot of cases. What happened to your back? Uh, I broke it in a boating accident. Oh, oh. no. And uh, it, uh, it still bothers me. It hadn't gotten well yet. Well, I'm oh, sorry no. to hear that. And uh, I was having uh, migraine headaches. With sure. Bother, and I wasn't able to keep appointments. And the, the judges knew that one way of getting in me was to make the trial last as long as they could. Oh, oh my gosh. And, and wear me out. Wear them. They, we, would, we would have court on Sundays. Right. And, uh, you know, they were, you know, working to beat me down. And the judges, the judges were uh, in North Carolina were after me. Wow. And you had a reputation. Yeah, I had a reputation, and the bar was actually the bar. And the bar. Yeah, the bar tried to disbar me twenty-eight times. Whoa! Be- because of you think racist stuff? Oh yeah! Wow! That was, that was racist stuff. What would they say is the reason for disbarring you when they tried to? They would make up stuff. And, uh, well, I'm glad you su- survived that, you know? Yeah, that's one, <laughs> yeah. Re- that's one reason I moved out here. Yeah, <laughs> you tried to get, yeah. get away from all the enemies. I wanted to get away from all <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you ma- you what, made your mark. What's, yeah. what, what's like the craziest rumor they made up about you? Right. Well, they talked a lot about uh, my uh, divorcing my wife and marrying a black woman. They claimed that, and it wasn't true. Oh. They did things to my children. They did. What they, they did to your children? Uh, at school, they would give them a hard time. Man. Jeez. And my daughter was really uh, upset about it. She was really young. That's so and, crazy. And they would they would say things to her about me all the time, and it, it got her tremendously upset. Wow. I mean, that's so interesting. Your whole life has been fighting for what's right. 
and you have your you know your your peers in school and then your parents and then the bar hey that's my dog hey, that's my hey dog there. Right, right. Hey. come in baby oh what's her yeah. name this is maya hi maya oh she's so cute uh, she is my lover to death congratulations is she a good dog She's my dog, yeah. Oh. Mine, my wife's dog. Oh. We fight over who owns her. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Maya. Uh, Maya wants to go after these little dogs. She loves little dogs. <laughs> oh. Uh. Sorry, Jerry. One second. We got to talk about Jeopardy. We're here to tell you about Play Show Jeopardy, a new Jeopardy game available now on PlayStation, Xbox, and Windows. Play Show Jeopardy is a way to experience the fun and excitement of being in a Jeopardy episode. In, in your own living room. It can be played alone and with friends and family and enables what you've been doing all along. Yelling, yelling at, at your, your TV. TV. Never before has there been the chance to participate with your voice just like a real Jeopardy contestant using actual episodes of the show. Experience the history of Jeopardy from your couch. 80s, 90s, all the way up to now, aka the present. Discover an endless world of knowledge. The game combines your console and your mobile device so you can buzz and speak your answers just like you're on the show. Cole and I played this last night. Mm -hmm. It was genuinely really fun. Friend of the show, actually, Andy Wood, who was in our desert episode this summer, mm -hmm. he was just on Jeopardy a few weeks ago. He did well. He won f many episodes, and Cole and I have been pretty mad about that ever since. We've been pissed because we're like, well, we're good at Jeopardy. We want to try this. So this was perfect that this company reached out to us and wanted to run an ad on our show, and we were able to play at home last night and kind of be better than Andy. Yeah, I popped a blood vessel. Did you? From screaming. You never told me. Well, I didn't want I didn't want to give you the advantage. Well, it really is a fun way to play Jeopardy. And also, I discovered in wanting to watch my friend Andy that it's very difficult to find Jeopardy episodes online. So the fact that the game uses real footage from Jeopardy and it feels like you're actually in the game was just super fun for both of us. You can play by yourself or up to three players total and play across different eras and additional DLC packs. Like Teen Tournament, Road to the All-Stars, and All-Stars Captions Classics. In fact, the game is 20% off on PlayStation until 119. So now's the time to get your Jeopardy on. Go to playshowtv.com to start playing Play Show Jeopardy now. That's playshowtv.com and start playing playing Jeopardy play show now or you can just look on the PlayStation app store so check out some Jeopardy it's fun to learn it's fun to play and it's fun to be okay back to Jerry thank you play show Jeopardy but I was just saying you know your whole life it's fighting for what's right and then you you know you have your peers and then your parents and then the bar and everyone's trying to punish you for it it's, yeah. it's really an with, amazing story with everyone uh, that's that's why they, they would like to punish right <laughs> yeah it's with, with with pretty much your whole community turned against you did you ever doubt whether or not you were doing the right thing well I had uh, mm -hmm. people that so uh, like my professors in mm -hmm. law school mm -hmm. they would keep up with me and encourage encourage me you and, and you know, look after me, and that that helped. Eh? I'm sure that was scary at the beginning of your career, and you don't you know you don't know if you're pissing off the wrong people or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, I remember they would tell me they want to uh, kill me in my car and blow my car up. And, Who oh. said that? Uh, people would call the house and tell me. Wow. Yes. And then I, <laughs> it was really hard. This um, civil rights worker, Golden Franks, who was with SCLC. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and who I admired greatly, and he taught me a lot. We would meet from time to time in a motel somewhere and talk strategy and what we were going to mm -hmm. do, and mm -hmm. I'd make our plans up. And uh, there was this guy in the room next door with this woman, and, you know, he was drunk, and, you know, he, she was worried about her husband catching them and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and so they came over and started talking to us. And he said, who are you? And I told him my name. He said, oh, my God, you're not going to kill me, are you? Whoa. Really? He said, he said, you know, I led a group of men that we looked for you for three days and nights. We were going to kill you. What? what? Yeah, that was our mission was to kill you. Oh, my you. God. Wow. And he's, th he's told me all these stories about what they had done trying to get to me. And you're like, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had no oh idea. Oh, my God. Did he, like, apologize? or? He, he was a, uh, uh, he had a radio show, uh, a TV show early in the morning. Racist radio? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what he called it. <laughs> That's what he called it. <laughs> 
And they they would talk about all the latest rumors about me and Man. other civil rights people. They hated civil rights people. Jerry, wow. do you mind saying your full name? I want to look you up. My name is Jerry Paul, P-A-U-L. Jerry, Jerry Paul. Paul. If you Google me, you'll find me. I would love to Google you. I'm so excited. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. My, so Maya's you, got a famous owner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've, Maya's going to be a famous dog. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. So you've had uh, some hits on your head. That's crazy. They, they told me that they had been paid $5,000. To God. kill me. I think you're worth more than that. I think <laughs> yeah. you're worth at least ten. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know, you got about five thousand dollars of That's a lot of money back in okay, those days. Back in those days. So, has your wife ever expressed, I don't know, fear about the work you're doing? Or yeah, you yeah. Know? We eventually divorced. Oh, so you divorced her? Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. It was uh, her father had been in the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, wow. She, you're, oh, and he, he told her if, he didn't, if she didn't get rid of me, that he would disinherit her. Oh. And he was a wealthy man. He was a farmer, and he had a lot of land and um, people that worked for him. And what he kept would say to them, you know, if you keep up what you're doing, these people working here, they could vote against me. Wow. wow. You know, that was what he was worried Jerry, about. Jerry, how come there hasn't been a movie about your life? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we planned one at one time. Okay. But uh, it didn't uh, come up with it. Very. Yeah. I, but I enjoyed uh, meeting the people that were working on the sure. scripts. Very interesting. I mean, you're like a much more interesting Atticus Finch. <laughs> like uh, the, the, the To Kill a Mockingbird is nothing know, in no. comparison to your life. I know, you know, he didn't really fight for certain things. He was sort of, yeah, you know, take it easy sure. and uh, go along with the old days. Yeah, I know, I never went along with the old days. Yeah, I love the way that, that black people were treated in the courtroom. That's great. So did so you know there've been a lot of. You know, changes this year in terms of public sentiment and Black Lives Matter and stuff. Has this been a big Crazy year for you? The biggest, biggest civil rights wow. year there has been. Wow. You know, the, the, we those were the dreams that we had, yes. movements that we had dreamed about. Yeah. Were you really proud of what was happening this year? Oh yeah, I was. I, I was. I, I was proud, proud of both the black and yeah. the white. And it's a victory for you. I mean, you're part of that victory, you know, mm -hmm. all the work well, you've done. Well, I felt like it. It made, me, it made me feel good to watch what was going on. Yeah, wow. I'm glad you got to see that in your lifetime. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, the things that I've seen in my lifetime have been really good. Yeah. yeah. And, wow. you know, there's been advancements, not in the South, right. and not in North Carolina. Right. You know, uh, North Carolina still is Two races. Two races. Yeah. Got yeah. a Diet Coke, a little Diet Coke sip. Yeah. Oh, we got a mustache. Ooh. All right. Good to see. Hey, Maya. Hey, Maya. Hi, baby. You're so pretty. Hmm. She's, she's come through to see what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, oh. so I'm just I was trying to think if I have any other questions. This has been the most interesting interview we've yeah. ever had. So um, you met a new wife, right? Yeah, I met a new wife. She was okay with the civil rights stuff that I was doing. Okay. And, and that, was a bit, that took a lot of pressure sure. off of me. And you mentioned she was black, or was that... No, so, she, no, no, she, no she's not black. No, she's not. That was, no. the, that was a lie people were saying about you. Yeah, that's what interesting. they would say. So how, did, how quickly, when you met this new woman, were you like, by the way, there's, there's people out to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at, at what date? Yeah, what date did, did, did you, you, you drop that information? <laughs> yeah. she, she wouldn't pay any attention to it. She said, "Oh well, sure." <laughs> oh my god. She just loved you for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, how'd you guys meet? Uh, met on uh, in the uh, Bahamas. Okay. Oh. I was I was sailing, and uh, she had taken a short trip with uh, being a babysitter for some teenage girls. And uh, we met, and uh, she stopped with the girls and came off with me, and got sailed on the boat with us. Wow, and that's then, crazy. Yeah, yeah. So. We, and then two weeks, two weeks later, we were married. Whoa. Is that true? And we've been married for forty some years. No, what? Wait, where did you get married? In the Bahamas or no? No, got married in um, 
what are the, the places that have ministers? Sure. They, they, sure. They, they're not actually connected sure. with... Uh, so, wait, where was she from? She was from Washington, D.C. So she just moved to North Carolina and just said, I'm in? Well, we moved to New York. Oh, you moved to New York? Yeah. Oh, so did you practice law in New York as well? Yeah, I did for a while. And how did the teaching career go for her? Uh, she had, was a great teacher. Hmm. She's a, she, she got cancer and she's had to retire. Oh, I'm sorry to hear mm-hmm. that. But uh, she had a great career. What type of, what did she teach? She uh, had disabled children, who she taught. Wow. Are you guys just the best people <laughs> in the world? What's going on yeah. here? Yeah. How is it that you are both just such saints? <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it sure is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just I'm blown away. What part of L.A. do you guys live in? We live in uh, South Pasadena. Oh, close to here. Oh, okay. yeah. South Pasadena looks like uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Oh, does it sure. really? Yeah. Okay. And it makes me feel like I'm back in Chapel yeah. Hill. Because I miss Chapel Hill so bad. No, South Pasadena you know, is... In North Carolina, they call Chapel Hill Commie Hill. Mm. Oh, Commie Hill. Because it's this college, right? Right. It's the college, and they think that... The college is full of radicals and it's ruining the state. Mm. All right, yeah. let's, let's get them going. Let's keep it going, huh? Yeah. Let's get yeah. more radical. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, in Chapel Hill, I'm so proud of the things that they do. They took down the Confederate statue and the students did it. And, yeah. yeah. You know, all sorts of stuff like that. When is the last time you visited North Carolina? Oh, it's been 20 years. Whoa. Whoa. Ever plan on going back? I I would love to go. I want to go back and spend a, a week in Chapel Hill. What about your your kids? How many kids do you have? I had three. And how are they? Uh, well, two died. Oh my gosh! Of uh, cancer. I'm so sorry to hear that. And uh, I have one that lives in Denver. Okay. And uh, he doesn't get along with me now. No, oh, no. I'm so sorry, Jerry. Yeah. Well. Mm. You know, you you make your decisions about your life and sure. what's right, and you you try to do what's right. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. you've tried very hard to do what's right. Yeah, and, <laughs> and sometimes you doubt what you're doing if it's right, but sure. And you think about it, and you think about all the people who have made sacrifices. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. You know, you got to do the same thing. Sure. So you did doubt yourself a little bit uh, when yeah, you first started oh, yeah. your career. Yep. Yeah, when you got all your old friends telling you that you are, have betrayed them and you know all that kind of stuff wow and, this is uh, you know and i w- i went back uh during the joanne little case the little washington hmm. and i would see old friends and they wouldn't talk to me or anything wow do you do you know anyone from um, North Carolina who was initially against you who has since turned around um, their way of thinking? I've there's some that talk to me now, mm. and so they have to change some things. Mm. And uh, but I don't want to say because I'm you know I don't want to make a big pronouncement that they disagree sure, with sure. and cause hardship for them. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. So you okay? So are you on? Facebook at all? Do you keep up with any of those people from your old life there? I I don't watch Facebook. Okay. That's not a thing that I do. I I, I hate Trump and yeah. And him putting him on Facebook makes me very angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate when he's on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. I mean, he has betrayed this country. Oh, sure. Yeah. I hear you, Jerry. Well, he, he really has, and the Republicans have repaid. Have, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Betrayed sure. this country. Yeah. Well, you know, hopefully, you know, this is our first episode of the year. This is going to come out in 2021. We've got a new president. Hopefully, we'll put this pandemic behind us. Hopefully, things will be better in the future for everyone, huh? Yeah, I hope uh, Kamala Harris gets a lot of play. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think she's real smart. She's smart, And I I watched her question the uh, people uh, as they came to her committee. Sure, sure. And I thought to myself, this woman is great. Sure, yeah. Well, she was a prosecutor, right? So she kind of shares some of your DNA a little bit? A little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I I sort of held back on her because she was a prosecutor. I know, that's a little, I hear you on that. But Mm. she seems quite smart and with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do you have any advice for any of the listeners? I mean, this this is the first episode of the new year. You've lived a very interesting life. Do you have any advice or wisdom? Yeah, yeah. You got to study. 
study. study. You do. You have to read and learn. And there's been a lot of great people in this country, and you need to read about them and know them and know what they did and the sacrifices that they made. You, 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 you included, yeah, my friend. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, we've taught them about you, so that's the first step. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a very small yeah. first step. <laughs> no, the great Jerry Paul, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, well, this well, is... Well, I appreciate that. This is awesome. I think we're going to wrap it up. This is going to be the end of the episode. Yeah. You, it's just been mostly Jerry, and we are so happy for it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. We're going to give you, you a Jerry. dollar and a sticker. Oh, okay. um, can I give the dollar to some charity? Please do. Please do. Please do, Jerry. We're going to give you a sticker. And um, maybe we'll get your email or something, and we can send you this so you can you can watch it okay. when it comes out. All right. Here's a dollar and a sticker for Jerry. Okay. And... And, and I give the dollar back to you so you can give it to a okay, charity. Okay, we'll donate to a charity. Okay, we'll, we'll do it. We, we promise we will. And then okay. we also have um, some dog treats for Maya. Oh, so she'll love that. This is for Maya. She loves treats. Yeah. Well, we'll try and get her over here. And Maya! I see her. She's sniffing. Oh, hi. Oh, is that your wife? That's my wife. Oh, oh really? Uh, oh, yeah. my gosh. I didn't know she was here. She yeah, was come out. Uh, she, she doesn't want to. No. Wow. Well, we, what, what's her name? Her name is Gina. All right, Gina. Gina, you are missed. Well, Jerry, truly a pleasure to talk to you. You're a yeah. very wise, smart man. We appreciate the work you've done in your life, and we're happy you shared it with us today. Yeah. Well, you make me feel better. I of appreciate course. it. Of course. Why don't we wave well, off? We're ending the episode. That's yeah. it for Jerry, okay, and that's I, it for us. You're all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So long. So long. <laughs> Sometimes I listen to or watch our show and I think, how come these guys are so good? And then I realize that's us. Yeah. Do you do that? No, but you have a very strong history of identity issues. Well, sometimes I, I go online and I say, oh, I want something to watch. And then I watch hours and hours of our show and I say, these guys are awesome. Who are they? I look them up. Turns out it's me and you. Yeah. But you also thought, you're like, oh, that's me. And I'm like, no, that's that guy, Jerry, that we met. I don't know. All I know is that our shit kicks ass and makes me want to um, high-five a priest. <laughs> a random alert. I guess so. It's not that extreme. <laughs> Thanks for watching or listening. <laughs> How about that Jerry guy, though, huh? Uh, we looked him up, and everything he said was a lie, but he does seem <laughs> cool. <laughs> no, <laughs> he's legit. Yeah. Jerry's awesome. Jerry and, Paul. And grandfather gonna, of Logan and Jake. Yeah, he's Logan and Jake Paul's granddaddy, and he taught them everything they know. Mm -hmm. And uh, legend has it that Jake's going to box him next. Yeah, Jake's <laughs> going to box his grand grandpa. <laughs> and Gina, Paul, we're going to email you the episode mm -hmm. and enjoy it. All right, everyone. Happy New Year. Thanks. We're happy to be back. And we'll be back next week. Mm-hmm. Bye. Happy 2021. Happy 2021. I'm ready for 2022, you know? <laughs> Not really. Check, check, please. Okay. Bye. Do it all for the viewers. You've got nothing to lose. There's a dollar for you here on the podcast. Outside. My dog recognizes me as Alpha. My dog oh, recognized yeah. me as Alf. Oh, really? <laughs>